Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Abrazo Football Podcast. You got Brooks and Blaine in the house. And uh, being that it's it's not technically an off week, is it, Brooks? I mean, we had a bunch of games during the week. Yeah. We got the FA Cup going. I think Serie A and La Liga are still going. But, I mean, it's largely for it, – it, it's it's not a very eventful part of the season right now. I mean, it's it's, it's a little bit calm. So I think we wanted to take this week to dis- discuss something besides just – like a recap of what happened in football around you know the the leagues right yeah and I th- I think you had something uh, you you wanted to talk about transfers and specifically transfers as they pertain to uh, Chelsea football club Chelsea and Arsenal because they basically like uh, the club just the teams we support in England essentially okay um yeah because I mean I don't know if we need to get into it now but like. Like I told you off camera, like our uh, Chelsea spent massive amounts of money and they're closer to 20th place than they are to fourth place or whatever, right? Like they're 10 points off each or something. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean so wherever you want to start, wherever you want to start. Yeah. Well, let's talk about Chelsea real quick. Then. Right. So, let's see. Over the summer, we brought in a Raheem Sterling who got injured almost instantly as into the Man City game. Like, I think it was two minutes. Yeah. He was injured. Um, we brought in Pierre Emerick Aubameyang. We brought in uh, Fofana. We brought in Kalido Koulibaly. We brought in. Is that it? No. Then I guess technically we brought in on loan. We brought in uh, Dennis Zakaria yeah. from uh, Juventus and Swiss fame. Um, I might be forgetting some more people, and I don't want to be disrespectful, but I mean. That was, I mean, those those transfer like Koulibaly wasn't cheap. Sterling, no. Koulibaly was, was expensive, not, especially for his age. Yeah, I mean, Fofana also was yeah. not cheap. That's so, for how I much mean, he gets I, handled I, I, by uh, Martinelli. Sorry, keep going. Yeah, so I mean, I think I think that's about it as far as like the big transfers that we did over the summer. I'm just gonna pull up transfer mark and and like make sure I get this right. But uh, as far as you know, what do I think? So I know Chelsea. Like for example, we wanted to pick up Enzo Fernandez from Benfica. Benfica was kind of like, you know, he has a release clause. If you're not willing to pay the release clause, yeah, then. you know, bugger off. Um. There's a couple other players that they have been attached to um, where it's kind of a similar story where there's there's a release clause. They need to pay the release clause. They're not really, really willing to pay the release clause. So it's like, you know, yeah, what are so we going to do? Are these is this like this season? A lot of things are coming like uncovered. Do you think this is just bad, like bad business or is it kind of just bad luck? You're injured. Uh, new ownership new entire like entirely new staffing essentially a couple different coaches like what do you think is the big problem well i mean okay so let's look at it so okay so wesley fofana we brought him in for 80 he's injured right kukorea mark kukorea we brought him in for 65 that was a big one by the way that was like a lot of money hold on yeah yeah 60 65 for kukorea spanish boy yeah uh you know and he's i mean he hasn't been a disappointment no i mean to be honest the the biggest disappointment for chelsea this season has just been like all of the injuries it you know reese james is constantly that's so sad um I guess I mean that's that's the biggest one. It's like when Reese James and then I mean I know you hate on Ben Chilwell, but when Reese James and Ben Chilwell are all injured, Chelsea cannot play at their best. And I mean Kukurea, yeah. I, I feel like he's been fine, but I mean he's not, in my opinion, he's not as good as Mister Ben Chilwell. And I mean koulibaly has been you know decent. He hasn't been the Napoli version. He hasn't been you know the cat the the Naples captain for us. Yeah. We have not got that version of him. I mean, you and you go back a season before we brought Rom in for about a hundred, and basically lost him for free. Timo Werner, we got him at a good price, but we also lost him for basically nothing. Yeah. Um. So I mean, what what does Chelsea need to do to be competitive? Well, if we could sign Enzo Fernandez and he ended up being like Fede Valverde for Real Madrid, that would be great. Um. This other guy that we just signed, the other um Fofana. I legitimately know nothing yeah, about, know about David that. Fofana except for, you know, the the fee was only 12 million, so 
I mean, he could end up being great, but at the same time, I, I legitimately, you know, I don't know who's to blame. I mean, you could, I, I, the only thing I will say is the ownership is only to blame for thinking that you can get a club to negotiate if there's a release clause. Right. There's no re like if there's a release clause, why would I negotiate? The, the release clause is there because we don't want to negotiate. We like we, the only reason you have to. a re- release clause is that we don't we don't need to and we don't want to. Right. Like we don't want to go back and forth. Like it's like it, this isn't a flea market. It's like you're going to like Nordstrom. The shoes are one hundred and eighty five dollars. Do you want them? Like you can't haggle <laughs> with the clerk. That's yeah. essentially they're like, yeah, but yo, like, yo, can I get a discount though? It's like, no, like we don't want three of your players. We want one hundred and twenty five. Yeah. You know, I don't know if it's euros, pounds or dollars, but we want, you know, around that region. And, you know, so if if I were in charge at Chelsea, I would say, you know, realistically, we need someone that can score goals re- consistently and reliably. And we need to rebuild the midfield. And Golo Conte is out. Yeah. Kovacic is injured a lot. And Jorginho is getting older. And I never really honestly rated. Jorginho yeah, he had that one with. season. So, yeah, really. So I feel like what we really need is like three midfielders. And a goal scorer. And, you know, if, if we could get Enzo Fernandez, I know Declan Rice would love to come to Chelsea, but I see he's now being uh, mentioned with Arsenal. And if I'm Declan Rice and I'm looking at Chelsea and I'm looking at Arsenal, Arsenal looks like a much better proposition. Currently, yeah. You know, stay in London, you know, go from West yeah. Ham to Arsenal, go to West Ham to Chelsea. I'm probably going to go to Arsenal. Even though I feel like the competition at Arsenal is probably going to be harder. Uh, Emil Smith Rowe might get healthy. You got Thomas Partey. You got the captain. Yeah. You got Xhaka. Like you got. Um, I feel like I'm leaving some people out, but I feel like there's just so many op- options at Arsenal to where it's like, you know, def- good defensive midfielder isn't just going to walk into the team no matter how much they yeah. cost because they're at the top of the table doing what they're doing. And it's never a guarantee. So I mean. I just I don't know Chelsea. I mean we've lost our way. We are we are struggling. I don't know who's to I don't know who's to blame. I mean, Graham Potter's not doing great. Thomas Tuchel wasn't doing great. You know, I feel like I you know I, I feel like their best. If I were in charge, try to get those people. If you can't get them in January, because it's typically harder to get yeah. deals in January, that's fine. Just. Play the rest of the season out. Don't make any rash decisions and reevaluate in June. Okay. That, that would be, you know, my recommendation. Try to get these people healthy. Call it a wash. Ho- hopefully you make yeah, it just, into Europe, yeah. Europa League and, and see where you go from there. Well, I mean, I so I watched the highlights from the Chelsea Man City game, and I guess they're going to have a replay tomorrow. But, I mean... Graham Potter, it looks like he let a bunch of the kids play. Yeah, at the end, he was just Why? like, all right. Cool. So you mentioned that Aubameyang came in for the injured Raheem Sterling. Aubameyang then came out <laughs> like the 80th or 70th minute. It was just, it's not the same Aubameyang. I don't really understand. But yeah, he 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 was He should have uh, never cut out. his hair. Should have never cut his he hair. That was a superpower. Should have never left Barcelona. And, yeah. But yeah, he put in a ton of these youth in. And I don't, I mean, that's kind of what, what Frank Lampard was doing um, when he took over and then he got fired because there wasn't enough of a, I don't know, I guess I mean, I, we can debate that like, going on about that. But I think that people are starting to see what Arsenal have been doing with young players and uh, essentially a youth system. And it's not just Arsenal, you know, Barcelona have a great youth system. Chelsea has not a bad youth system, but I think that they're finally just like, oh, okay, like we do have some good youth in here. Like, let's get them developed. Now is the time. We're not going to win the league. Um, we need to hopefully make Europa League. So let's throw these youth kids in and see what they can do. No, bro. I, no, I'm a defendant. Chelsea has an amazing youth okay. system. They just never give their youth an opportunity, and okay. then those players go elsewhere and thrive. They even have a great recruitment system for getting players that are good from like other clubs and if they just it's like for example like look at Mohamed Salah Kevin De Bruyne even you could say Romelu Lukaku those are three players that they all brought in before they hit their peak Mm -hmm. and like before they were yeah but they never give them the time to like mature exactly and develop 
Yeah. So if if they were like if, if they if they were like for example, we are going to allow this young team to grow into it, kind of yeah. like Arsenal. Like they had two bad seasons, now they're doing good. Like imagine if Mo Salah, Romelu Lukaku, and Kevin De Bruyne all stayed yeah, at we're the club. Still there. <laughs> did two <laughs> crazy. Did two pity seasons. Do we would have been basically from 2017 to 2022, we would have been running the whole thing, and then yeah. like and then keep some of the other youth players. Like like I mean, there's just so many. Like I could name like. If you look at just any random Premier League club and you like look at their team, on every team in the Premier League, there's at least one or two Chelsea players that are starters. And that doesn't mean they're the best players in the world, but it's like why like like if for example, there's a midfielder named uh uh Romeo Oriol that plays for Southampton. He's a decent, he's actually a really good player, but he just couldn't cut it at Chelsea at the time. And then he went to Southampton. It's like, okay, this guy, let's say yeah. he's worth like 60 million. It's like, no one's going to buy him. Instead, they're going to go buy like a marquee player. He's just like a, like a guy that goes yeah. in, does his job. He scored against Chelsea a few times. And it's like, if they would have just kept him, it would have been free. Instead right. of spending like 65 to get Jorginho and another whatever 70 to get Conte, that's 120 that they could have went and just like went out and bought like let's just say Kylian Mbappe or like you know what I mean yeah. like or, they just like I feel yeah. like they like don't make the right decisions and it's hard because like you want to win now but it's like if you would have just kept these even like Tammy Abraham for example Nathan Ake. like you could have kept Tammy Abraham Nathan Ake oh, that's yeah that's an yeah exactly Harry Nathan Blumpty, Ake Blumpty. he's like he's Tariq Lamptey, uh, you know, Fik, Fik, Fikayo Tomori right. just won Serie A last yeah. season. You know, all, all of these types of guys, it's like you could just keep them. But it's like guys get fed up. They don't want to sign, you know, extensions just to go on another another, another loan, loan and another yeah. loan. So it's just like just let them play. Like it's, it's like if you're not going to win the league, like these guys, like for example, like all I'm saying and then I'm going to be done. It's like the difference is it's like we're going to spend all this money and not play our youth so we can finish in third, second, or fourth. Instead, you could say we're going to play our youth and we're going to finish in eighth, then we're going to finish in seventh, then we're going to finish in third, then mm-hmm. we're going to win the league four seasons in a row, and then when get second, then spend some money to stay competitive. But like they, you know, yeah, it's not they they're, they're like the way Roman Abramovich ran the thing was. You know, I want success yeah. today. And that's fine because they got success. But the new owners, I mean, Roman Abramovich would buy Enzo Fernandez for 124 and he wouldn't bat an eye. Yeah. He wouldn't come here talking about, let me give you three players and 50 mil. Right. Like, that's embarrassing. So it's like, yeah. if you're not going to do what the big man used to do, you got to, you got to, you, you know, you can't, you can't come out talking about, like, I'm going to buy these players. And, like, I mean, and, and fair play, you bought Koulibaly, you bought. Uh, whoever, Mark Kukure, you brought Raheem Sterling, you went and you you did spend money, but you got to either keep spending money or you got to look at the youth. Yeah. It's one or the other. You, yeah, can't, you, I can't just, ha- you can't go half. Yeah, and to, your, and to that point, I just think that like Chelsea's never, this is kind of uncharted territory for Chelsea in the last 20 plus years. You know, they've never really, they've always been top of the table. They've never really had a, a lot of this to work, like to deal with. Um. And so I think that maybe they will. Maybe they will, like, you know, Liverpool did this. They got Jurgen Klopp, and they're like, all right, we we have this kind of three- to five-year plan or whatever where we're going to be, you know, 10th and above, you know, 8th, then 6th, whatever. Then we're going to work our way to winning the league, winning Champions League, whatever. It's going to take some time. And I just – Chelsea's, you know, like you said, Ramon and Brown, which I'm like, now we're going to just go and buy it. Well, who we need now, and we're going to buy them now, and we're going to pay whatever it – they need to win now and so this is just a little bit of it seems a little bit of a different kind of theory um it's just like i just don't think that the current chelsea ownership understands that it's a process it can be and it is now going to be a process i think that they were just like no we're just going to buy we're just going to buy these people but i think it's kind of clear that even at that roman abramovich was better <laughs> or who he entrusted well, well, hold was on better. Nah, 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 nah. let me say no no so they bought the problem isn't that they didn't spend money up front. They spent money up no, front, that. but then injuries, came, the injuries came, and now it's how are they handling the injuries? They're trying to get discounts. Yeah, but but Raheem Sterling just 
just got injured. He hasn't had a great season. Aubameyang hasn't had a great season. Koulibaly has been average. Like, all of the money that they're spending, but like... Reece, but Reese James has been injured. Yes. N'Golo Conte has been injured. Yeah. Ben but Chilwell again, has been injured. But those aren't purchases that these guys made. These are all Roman, Ab Roman Abramovich no, purchases. Yeah. No, what I'm, what I'm saying is they made purchases ahead of the season, and they had a team ahead of the season, and then those injuries kicked in and what they need to do is what I'm saying is right now they have those injuries and they need to spend, but they're trying not to spend. Like yeah. for example, if Reese James and cool ball or if Reese James and um, Fofana, the um, Wesley Fofana, cool. If Wesley Fofana stayed healthy. Yeah. And if Reese James was healthy all season, cause he, he came back for one game and got injured yeah. and it, Ben Chilwell's played like maybe two games this season. Yeah, so yeah. If, if those three players would have stayed healthy that would then say we don't need to like we we don't have this uh, we don't have to spend any more money on the defense we're solid Tiago Silva Fofana and then Koulibaly, Koulibaly could come yeah. in and maybe he could do better so like the the back line would be fine so there would be no issue there and they would be doing a lot better but I'm saying they're not they're not it are not doing poorly this season because they didn't spend money they're doing poorly this season because of injuries and now instead of addressing the injuries by spending money they're trying to address the injuries by getting players at a discount and not spending money. yeah that's what that's what i feel the problem is but that, even the know, players that they're getting like, right now at least who they're two that they're like tied up with currently is endo for enzo fernandez and michaela mudrik like is that what you really need right now those are like Mudrik is we, we need midfield a winger we do need mid well I don't know who he is I'll be honest but we need like yeah. Enzo like we need a we need a dog midfielder like our midfield is so trash right now there like there's I mean if we could get Enzo Fernandez I feel like that would be good it wouldn't improve our situation right now yeah. because our defense is still crumbled and it and I, and I get it it doesn't make like if you just bought Fofana and you have two world class or at least one and a half world class outside backs it doesn't make sense to go out and buy another one like let's just get through the season yeah. we're not going to get relegated that's totally fine but like N'Golo Conte needs to re be replaced yeah. Mateo Kovacic needs to be replaced Jorginho needs to be replaced and we need a striker and for the record I mean our our offensive line Net, like I'll be honest, yeah. P Pierre Emerick Aubameyang, uh, n no one ever. I never thought he was going to come in and make the difference. Raheem Sterling, I thought he would be a lot better, mm -hmm. but I mean, it's it's like one of those things where it's like you see a guy in a system, that system being Man City, having amazing seasons and winning trophy after trophy, and like yeah, that's it's easy to do when you have eighty percent possession every single game, and yeah. you know. You're you're only asked to get tappins, and you'll, yeah. you'll have the occasional free set piece yeah. or curler from outside the box. But most of your goals are you running to the back post and tapping it right. in because you're fast, and that works for you. And I think it's a little naive to say, "Oh yeah, we're going to bring this guy in and he's going to replicate that." Right. Well, who's giving him service? Yeah, our out, our 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 left back and right back are out. So who's giving him service? It's not Caesar Aspilicueta. No. Oh, is it going to be Mark Kukurea? Maybe one day, but he's not all the way there yet. Is it yeah. Kai Havertz? He doesn't cross the ball. Is it Mason Mount? He likes to tuck inside. So it's like you got all these players trying to play yeah. through the middle, and our width is basically Kukurea. That's that's our width. That's it. No one else. And then Hakim Ziyech can't get minutes for whatever reason. Yeah. So, that, so I mean, yeah. Do you think that do you do you trust then Todd Bowley and this staff to like, you know, take you guys out of this? I mean, I feel like I at this point I would say I would have to trust them. Okay. I mean, it's been less. It's been less. They've they've had one transfer window, and now the and then January just opened. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I feel like I mean, I mean, I I don't want to be a toxic fan. I feel like yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it. You know, give them give them time. You know, if if we're in the same place this time next year, maybe then maybe, we have maybe it would be alarming. But I mean, yeah. January. I mean, it, it's annoying that they're trying to get players at discounts. Like if there's a if there's a release clause, just pay the release clause and move yeah. on. If that's what you intend to do, do it. But you know, come summer. When you have, you know, you know, contracts are ending, yeah. uh, you know, no, everything's open for negotiation. Clubs aren't it, like Benfica is not in contention to win, like, you know, a Portuguese title. You know, maybe things could be different. But, you know, so I feel like it would be unfair because I like if I'm being honest, the efforts like it was Thomas Tuchel that came to Todd Bowley and said, these are the players I want to be fair. 
Todd Bowley got Thomas Tuchel all the players that he wanted. Mm-hmm. Thomas Tuchel didn't let t- t- Ted Bo- Todd Bowley didn't get let, the players yeah. that he wanted. Yeah. So, so to be fair, the coach got the man and the players that he wanted, and they weren't able to produce. Some maybe they didn't have enough time. There were personal issues in the coach's life, and there were injuries. Now we have a new coach in Graham Potter. Do you trust him? Well, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> Kyle, you guys, I, but like, I, what I, do you I, think? Like watching the first uh, couple months of him, what do you? What is your? Uh, what is your reaction to him? He, he and um, if I'm being honest, if I'm being completely honest and as charitable as possible, he inherited a, a team that was in bad a, a, a team that was in bad condition. He he inherited a team that was in bad condition, in the and and he had maybe a month and a half to work with them before they went off to the World Cup. Yeah. And now they're coming back. So I think under these circumstances, I mean, it, it I feel like it'd be tough to judge anybody. Yeah. I feel like it wouldn't be fair to judge him until he has a full transfer window. So like I feel like I can't give him an honest assessment until about. October of this year after he has a summer okay. a full preseason with the team he gets the players he wants assuming management gets him the players he wants he can work with those players for the full summer and in a full preseason going into the season and then if we're still losing like 1-0 to like Brighton. uh I mean I can't like uh, nor or uh, N- uh Nottingham Forest like yeah then then yeah. it's time to reevaluate but I feel like right now like we're just like we're just trying to get by yeah. That's how I feel. So the last thing that I want to say about this, because it's been like 20-ish minutes, is um, I just feel like, you know, what Todd Bowley is doing is is just, I'm going to have to go here too much, but like pulling off these, trying to pull off trades. Not like, this is not really how you do it in European football. He's, it's like, no, like you said, there's a price, you pay it. You can't negotiate a release clause for the most part. They are telling everyone in the world he's 125, Pay us 125 or keep moving. Mudrik, same thing. Hey, we want at least 90. We buried him higher than Anthony. Give us at least 90. And they're trying to, like, I, it almost reminds me of Arsenal back in like 10 years ago when they would pay, what was it, 41 million for, for Suarez? It's just yeah. kind of like, yo, this is not how business is done. Embarrassing. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, yeah, dude. I mean, that's definitely, and like, they need to get. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure I can't remember. I know they had a sporting director coming in that's going to start handling that. But yeah, because yeah. like in U.S. sports, the concept of paying a release clause or paying a transfer fee is non-existent. It's right. only trades. It's like, yeah. oh, I have Michael Jordan, and I want let's just say Penny Hardaway in the '90s. <laughs> well, I will trade you. Right. I mean, uh, these three players and a future lottery pick in the draft. Yeah. And now I have this player. There, there, there was no, uh, there was no money exchanged. It's just people, right. and 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 theoretically future people that you do. And then like the only difference is like you just pay the contract. So it's like if he's on a hundred grand a week, now you're paying his hundred grand right. a week. Yeah, if yeah, he's yeah. you know on three fifty, you're agreeing to pay that. But that's it. Like there's no, there's nothing on top of that. Which honestly, that I mean, that's less that that's less complicated because it's like if you just only have to be like, yeah, like I'll just take your contract. Do you want to come over here yeah. and we'll give you those guys? Like that's easy, but that's not. That's not how, how it does it over it's here. Like, we'll keep yeah. we'll keep all your we'll keep all our players. And we're going to give you some money to bring another player in. We're not yeah. going to like you. Don't have to lose. It's not like a balancing act. Like you, you give and take how you see fit. Yeah, yeah. There's no salary caps. There's no, you know, there's no limit to how many people you can have. Well, I mean, in La Liga, I guess it's a little bit different. But in Premier League, if you want to have ten strikers on your roster, yeah. that's on you. All right, so that's been 23 minutes on Chelsea. Anything else you want to say before we wrap up, Chelsea? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Will they no. beat Will they beat City in their what is it FA Cup tomorrow? Yeah, they'll beat them in the FA Cup. Okay. C- City's City's focused on you know the league and the Champions yeah. League. I feel like I feel like they aren't going to give like I feel like Pep's going to send out the kids. He's going to send out the kids. If he was smart, he would send out the kids. He has yeah. nothing to gain by winning another FA Cup. Yeah, no, any year right. where they're trailing Arsenal in the league. Yeah, no, you're right. And they just signed Erling Holland. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's how I feel. Yeah. I think so, too. So what's up with Arsenal, then? Well, I mean, so it's it's really an interesting situation because similar to Chelsea, we haven't been in this position for many years. Um, and I think that, as you know, a lot of people don't 
understand this aspect of world football as well. It's like, you know, there are many competitions and obviously Arsenal is going to be uh, in many competitions, hopefully for years to come, which, you know, is where they should be. Um, and I think that it's difficult because on the surface level, when you're looking at the Premier League, it's like, man, this is a perfect team. You don't want to mess with it. Everything looks great. But you forget that you need not only backups for when people get hurt, but also FA Cup, EFL Cup, Champions League, or in this case, Europa League, whatever. Like, there's a lot of a lot of competitions out there, and you need replacements. You need people to rotate in and out. It's a long, long season. So, I thought it really interesting in the first place that they got rid of um, Pepe. You know, they sent Pepe out on loan, Nicolas Pepe. Yeah, Nice, right? Yeah, like I, I just like it's interesting because. Saka, yeah, he's in my opinion, you know, and in the the best in England right now. He was he's the best player, you know, his best voted best player, or whatever. But that's not to say that he might not get hurt or tired. Like this is a World Cup year on top of this stuff. So it just seemed really weird that they let Pepe go um, with really no backup to Saka. Who comes in for Saka? Because like I don't know, uh, it was Pepe. Pepe and Saka used to kind yeah. of. And at this point, they don't have that. So obviously, they need someone who can come in for him. Mikhailo Mudra can kind of play left and right. He mostly plays on the left, though, which is where Martinelli is. And I guess that those are the two places that, as an Arsenal fan, you'd, you, you, it's hard to say you want to strengthen because those are two of the best players in their age at the world in the world right now. Um, but but yeah. you know, so that's what I'm thinking is like for those positions that you don't have a ton of of backup at. Um, or, I mean, other wingers, uh, that I think is the first. Yeah, because Emil Smith Rowe, he can't play winger, can he? They kind of put him on the left a little bit. Um, but I mean, Emil Smith Rowe. He's should, also injured, isn't he? Yeah, he's finally like playing again, practicing again. But I mean, he I think he's more of a natural replacement for what? Odegaard, right? Yeah, attacking mid. Yeah. Is what I would have thought. Like, play, play in the middle. Play the ten. Yeah. So him, and then I mean, th- as you know, they were they're they're being linked to Declan Rice for like eighty eight million in the summer, which is uh, I mean, Declan Rice is great, but I just think that the English media overprices English players. Um. Yeah, man. I saw. Let me. I saw this funny meme. Let me see if yeah. I can pull it up. Yeah. I like. It's kind of. I mean, it's a little bit. It. it I mean, it, it's slightly problematic, but uh, it was a meme where it has so it has Declan Rice, and it has different names. So it has Declan Rice and his transfer price, one hundred million pounds. Then they have him with, next to a Brazilian flag, and instead of Rice, his name is Arrozinho, which is little rice in, in Portuguese. <laughs> and you know, same player, they just darkened his skin a little bit, and they're saying he's only worth fifty million pounds. Then they have him next to an Italian flag, and his name is Risotto, 35 million pounds. Then they have him next to a, and I think it's a Dutch flag, a Dutch flag, and his name is Rist. I don't, I, I feel like I need to see how you say that. Uh, but it, it, and then he's only like 20, 20,000 or 20 million. Oh pounds. my God. Yeah. Or 12, I mean, no, 12 million, oh, 12 million. <laughs> Yeah, I just feel like they get they overinflate English play, English players are overinflated their pricing, um, especially when they're staying within England. So I think Declan Rice is really good. Do I think he's eighty eight million? Absolutely not, no question. Uh, and I kind of hope West Ham keep him for West Ham's sake because West Ham is not doing great right now. Um, nah, eight, eight he, has, he has to get out. Nah, for he his get sake, out of he has he to go. get out of there. His sake, he has to go. But if you look at Arsenal. Granted, Thomas Partey is up there in age. Granit Xhaka is up there in age. How old is Rice? Because he's not super young, but he's not that old. He's like 27 out of the he's oldest? He's like 21. That's how young no, he is? Declan Rice? Yeah, Declan's he like, yeah, he's a kid. Yeah, he might be 24, but I feel like he's like 21. Okay, he's 23. Okay. He's 23. And so at that at that rate, okay, like great. He's going to be a backup for, I mean, he, he he's going to have a years and years left in him to play. So that's really cool, but... Right now, would he get in above Shaka and Partey? Because I don't think so. I mean, is he a better player? Yeah, yeah, I guess that's Is he a better player than Granite Xhaka? Of of course, 1,000%. Without a shadow of a doubt. (laughs) Without Declan Rice is a world-class player, and I'll stand on that. but, But here's the caveat. 
granted, Jacques has been playing in the team. He yeah. knows the system. Yeah. They have an understanding. There's chemistry. Do you bring a guy in from the other side of the town that doesn't have that understanding just because he's a better player? I yeah. don't like I feel like a lot of clubs have made this mistake yeah. time and time again, thinking, oh yeah, he's a better player. He'll do better. Let's yeah, just install just him in the midfield yeah. and it all falls apart. It's like Granit Xhaka knows like what Martinelli's weaknesses are. He knows what yeah. Odegaard's strengths are, and he knows what he needs to do when he's playing between those two to make things right. So for those reasons, I would say I don't think it would be smart to you know, spend a hundred million dollars. I don't think it's smart ever to spend a hundred million no. anything on any player because historically it never works out. No, but if so, you could yeah. get Declan I, Rice for in the summer for uh, English pricing it would be what sixty. If they said sixty, I'd be like, okay, like. But even that's high. I that's don't know. A deal. But, nah, that's a deal. that's a that's a because he's twenty three. You know what he can do. He likes Bukayo Saka. They're good friends. Obviously, Ben White. They kind of know each other. They're all the English boys. Ramsdale. I think that would be a good fit. But you're right. He does need to be able to know that system that 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 Arteta plays. And it, and maybe that takes a season uh, of getting used to. And so you know he's got to come off the bench a bit or start here and there or mostly play in Europe. I would yeah, be I happy mean, to no see. It. I was happy when that thing popped up when they, when I saw the the alert. However, eighty eight million pounds is a wild amount of money for Declan Rice. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Who? I mean, he, this is all. This is all I'm going to say. I love Declan. Like yeah, I'm I a big Dec. I have a Declan Rice jersey for West Ham. That's how much I like Declan Rice. Is he worth a hundred million pounds? No. No. Like, if you're going to spend a hundred billion pounds on a British midfielder, you better go get Jude Bellingham. Absolutely. Or you better put it towards Absolutely. Jude Bellingham. Yes. And that's that's just the thing where it's like it's it's like it's the messed up part where it's like, this is the best player and he's worth let's I saw a report saying Jude Bellingham's worth like two hundred million. It's just unbelievable. Jude's worth two hundred million. So it's like if Jude's worth two hundred, then Declan's worth a hundred. Right. That would make sense, but but no, no one's going to pay two hundred million dollars for no. a midfielder. So realistically, Jude Bellingham's going to get sold for one twenty or one thirty. Yeah. Unless there's like they find his, you know, like there's like uh, an activation of a release clause this summer, and they're like, oh, to actually you can get him for eighty. Yeah. And it's like Declan Rice next to Jude oh. Bellingham is worth thirty if he's worth eighty, but. Yeah. You know, if if there's no one you can buy for a hundred, and you need a defensive midfielder that can also score goals and has great pass of and who does it ball, in England, the one of the, the toughest league. Yeah, and he can also play. He not only can he play defensive mid, he can also play center back. Yeah, you know that's a versatile that's, dude. That's yeah. a, that's a versatile dude, and it might and it might be worth the money. But if there's someone else better, which there are better players. It, it, it kind of doesn't make sense. So it's like one of those things where it's like, yeah, man, I mean, come on. Yeah. Like, like 60 for Declan Rice, though, I would say that's a fair price. I'd be happy to what get What does Transfer Mark say? But I, I would, I really want Mikhail Mudrik. I want this, I want this Ukrainian kid so bad. Like, the Ukrainian kid? Yeah. How much they want for him? Uh, they want close to 100. So they're like saying like 85. Arsenal's gone up to like 70 something with add ons, but they're saying they want 85 is the lowest lowest so like they rate him higher than anthony yo you just just put on like one youtube video of him i thought he was left footed but he's right like that's how good he is with his left he's putting in crosses he's scoring he's taking people on he's a right footed plays basically mostly on the left wing as a lot of right uh footed guys do but it's yeah he's he's amazing you gotta just look him up um i can understand the hesitancy to pay nearly 100 million for a kid who's only in the Ukrainian league. Only playing in Ukraine. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, bro. He's playing for Shakhtar. Especially when you bought Pepe for 70 and you're not happy with how he's performing. Yeah, I would. I mean, he. I'm sure he's good and I believe he's good. I mean, I just, I would say, I, you know, <laughs> to spend, I, I, I it just historically it doesn't, it, it's, yeah. it's, I, it it rarely ever works out. Yeah. It rarely ever works out. Like even look at er, Erling Holland. Like he's working out and he didn't go for a record fee. He, he 60, they got right? him. Yeah, like basically yeah. got him for free. That's so crazy. No stress. No stress. No strings attached. He's flourishing. Yeah. Academy graduates flourishing. Yeah. Hundred million dollar man Jack Grealish. 
right. down bad. And I'm a big Jack Grealish fan, but he's down bad. You got to call us. I mean, he scored against Chelsea, right? But he he's got a, he got bad. the assist. And he had a couple of assists. Oh, oh, was the it the before. assist? Yeah, because um, yeah. him and uh, him and Mares came in and, and won the game for him, basically. Yeah, okay, but I mean... It's not. It's not going according. Like yeah, he's, yeah, like, yeah. You're right. We'll say he's not giving a hundred million dollar performance. Yeah, Jaden Sancho, that's because, same thing. Yeah, it's like very rarely is a player ever going to live up to that price tag. Like yeah. I, it, it rare. Like but like Erling Holland to like he, he Erling Holland like Mbappe Erling Holland. I would argue even Neymar, all yeah. like lived up to their transfer fees. I can't think of many other people no. who have lived up to Coutinho their transfer. Coutinho did not. Fees. No. Um, Maybe Robert Lewandowski, you know, but yeah. he was on a discount. Like, like it's the players that live up to it are always the players that are at a discount. Like, yeah. Robert Lewandowski, they got him from Bayern at a discount. Yeah. He's, living, he, he's living up to it because it's only, like, $40 million. Yeah. Like, I mean, Leroy Zane is not living up to his no. transfer fee to Bayern Munich. He's not. Ferran Torres, another city export, yeah. not living up to his transfer fee in Barcelona. It's just, it never, you know, it people, the, the, one day people are going to learn. And I feel like this is like a symptom of being like a rich, greedy club. One day people are going to learn like the, the best way to get success is to, uh, what am I trying to say? Um, Grow my it. brain just broke. Grow it, like develop Youth players, boy. find yeah. players that have promise and develop them. You can't just even you like very, even when it's like a really good player, like Fernando Torres was a proven premier league striker at Liverpool. Yeah. You bring him to Chelsea and he can't do anything. And it's like, why? I don't, I mean, you can't say it. Or, or Eden Hazard, one of my favorite players of all time did did it big at Chelsea. You know what I'm saying? Like look at this. This is the OG kid. Yeah, that's the first one. First yeah. season. Happy birthday by the way. No, actually this, no, this is the second. This is the oh, second. Okay. This is the second one. The first one was the gold one. Okay. But uh second second season at Chelsea up until he left a baller 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 went to Real Madrid. He can't do it. Whether he doesn't want to. Yeah, yeah. That whether is a bit you more get him that. on the, you know, well, I mean, he he wants to. I mean, he has he, he still has metal in his ankle for crying yeah. out loud. The man's been perpetually injured since. But still, the point being, it never. In Real Madrid, paid us a hundred million. It never works yeah, out. That's crazy. Um, what else? What else should Arsenal be doing though? I I mean, I think that what they're doing is is great. They're also in talks with Jao Felix. I think that. That's a wild. That's not going to work. Fee that they're, that Meth Atletico is is asking right now, like sixteen million for like a six month loan. Get out of here. Sixteen million? Maybe it's eight. I don't know. It's in the high millions for a, a loan of 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 a one half of a season. Come. Oh, yeah, that's wacky. Now nah, they would be Come. doing him a favor. Yeah, totally. So. I don't know, man. I think that what they do need some attacking options because Jesus is hurt, um, and that means they just left down to Enketia. So I think that they're looking in all the right places right now. We'll just have to see. Arsenal keeps it very quiet until it's done. So it's hard to see what the rumors are. And also, all the Arsenal fans link Arsenal to every single available player. It's the most annoying thing in the world. Yeah, I saw that he's, uh, Adrian Rabio is going to leave this club. <laughs> And go to uh, Arsenal. I would love that. Hey, I would Turin. love that. It's because they're now going to be in all these competitions in the future. They need some depth right there. No offense to El Nene. I love him as a person. And he pushes and he tries, but El Nene is no Rabio. El Nene is no Declan Rice. Oh, no. Not even close. And that's no. what they need. They need no, it now like, that they're Rab going to Rabio win is a top tier. Yes, he is. And now that Arsenal have back. Kind of, it's looking like they're getting back to the Arsenal who they used to be and who they truly are. People are like, "Oh, okay, I can see myself at Arsenal." And so now they need to capitalize on that. Yeah, yeah, okay. So let me put it this way: you got you're you're at the helm. You get three transfers this this window right here, this January winter window. What three players are you bringing in? If money doesn't matter. Yeah, just three players. What three players are you bringing in? Mudrik. Okay. Absolutely Ukraine. Mudrik. Um, yeah, okay. the Ukrainian bull. And then I'm also going to, I mean, because Jao Felix is available, I wouldn't 
get him otherwise. Like, I don't think he's had a great success at Atletico Madrid. He was incredible at Benfica. He's been good at Madrid, but he was like a way better player, I think, Benfica. Um, so I'd take him because I think that Arteta can work wonders with him. I think that he would fit better at Arsenal than he's currently is at um, Atletico Madrid. And the last one I would do would, I guess, like, I would just say, yeah, let's buy a duck and rice if we got all the money. Why wait till summer? Let's do it now. Thomas Partey, you know, is injury prone. Um, Granit Xhaka, while he's been much better this last year and a half, he's still prone to the occasional erroneous red card and losing his temper, which I still like that about him, but not when you have, not when the season's on the line like this. So I would get a, I would get Declan Rice. That makes sense. Okay. Dope. Okay, well, I guess we'll watch the space, we'll watch the transfers, we'll watch the rumors, and, you know, see what transpires. More than likely, no deals will get done in London. No, I think that what Arsenal <laughs> will do is get Mudrik. You think so? I think they'll get him. I think that they'll do attacker. I think that they're less concerned about the midfield and the defense as they are about they want scoring winger. goals. Yeah, it's like, I mean, they have a strong defense right now, and they have a pretty good... Rotation there, you know, when you think that sometimes Zinchenko comes in off the bench um, and Tomiyasu comes off the bench, like that's a pretty good, that's some good depth there. So I think that they're mostly worried about scoring goals. All right. Well, we'll, we'll see. We'll watch the space. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, Brooks, before we get out of here, there was one more thing I wanted to bring up. So I know you're not too dialed in when it comes to the affairs of the U.S. soccer no. and what is the U.S. men's national team, but no. Sparks flew. On this side of the pond this week, there was a uh, a kind of a crazy once-in-a-lifetime scandal, if that's what we want to call it, that happened. So let me just walk you through what happened, and I want to get your take on it. Okay. So U.S. men's – so the coach that took the U.S. to the World Cup, his name is Greg Berhalter, okay? Okay. One of the best U.S. players, his name is Gio Reyna. He plays for Borussia Dortmund. He wears the number seven, okay? His name's Gio Reyna. Now – his dad used to be the captain of the U.S. men's national team, right? Okay. Greg Berhalter also used to play for the U.S. men's national team. So these, so the coach and the player's father, they're pretty close. They've known each other. They went to high school together. They went to college together. They played professionally together, right? And the coach's wife and the player's dad's wife – they also grew up together and they were roommates in college and they played collegiate soccer together for the North Carolina or for the UNC University of North Carolina women's team, right? Okay, so the, these families, they're well, they know each other well. They go back to the 90s. It was right? like a love and basketball now, thing, but with soccer. But with soccer, right? Okay, okay, so back when they were all in college, right? Greg Berhalter, the, men na the men's national team coach, apparently they were out at a bar. And he got in a fight with his then girlfriend who he married and he kicked her in the legs. Domestic abuse type situation. Okay, he kicked her in the legs. She broke up with him. Good. Her roommate, which is Gio Reyna's mom, was there for her. She saw Good. the whole thing. She was there. She took care of her. Seven months later, the woman, Mrs. Berhalter and Greg Berhalter, they got back together. The families knew what happened, right? You know, he was drunk. He kicked you. He learned from it. You guys are back on track. They get back together. They get married. They have four kids. They've been married for 25 plus years up to this point in time. Okay. So now we're at the World Cup, right? So Gio Reyna is at the World Cup. He has a bad attitude. Greg Berhalter basically says you're not going to be playing because you have a bad attitude and you're also a little bit injured. Okay. His mom essentially gets pissed off about this and calls the president of U.S. soccer and says, hey, I have some information about the coach no. that I want to share with you. You can guess what that information was. Right. The coach kicked his wife at time girlfriend 30 years ago at a bar. He kicked her. This plug so Greg Berhalter gets wind of this. He's like, okay, I I hear that. You know, they probably called and said, hey, we heard this thing. So he gets on Twitter, and he says, you know, back in '91, I kicked my wife. We, you know, we got through it. We've made up. I learned from it. I haven't, you know, kicked her or anybody for that matter, besides other players on the soccer field. You know, during my career, or when I'm kicking balls in practice. But I haven't been violent towards anyone since, okay. and I've moved on. But 
I was trying to be blackmailed because I wouldn't play her son. And, you know, so here we go. So the mom comes out and she's like, yeah, I, you know, I was upset and he did kick his wife and the world needs to know about it and they're minimizing it. He actually did a lot worse than kick her. And the wife comes out and she's like, no, like we handled it. He just kicked me. It was, I mean, it's a big deal because it's domestic abuse, yeah, but like, deal. it's not that big a deal, but it's, but she's like, it's also not a big deal. Like we, you know, we resolved it and we've moved on and I wish she didn't bring it up. Like my mm -hmm. kids didn't know, oh, you know wow. what purpose, what purpose is this serving? It's so long ago. We've moved on those, those wounds have been healed. Like, what are you trying to accomplish? And she's like, well, my kid didn't play. And I'm mad. So I'm going to make you guys suffer because my son only got to play like 30 minutes in the World oh, Cup. Geez. So that's the situation, Brooks. I want your take on that. Like, what do you think should happen to the coach, to the player, and to the parents of the player who released – or with the, what people are saying is it's either extortion or blackmail. So what should happen to all parties in your opinion? Well, yeah, because there's multiple different situations at hand, right? It's – there's a – yeah. I, I mean, there's a domestic abuse that happened, whatever, 30 yeah. years ago. Um, and then now there's, yeah, extortion. <laughs> it seems more like yeah. extortion than blackmail. She's not – she doesn't want anything. The, the World Cup is over. It's like, she, yeah, the World Cup is, is like, over. Yeah. yeah. She just wants him fired. She's like, I don't. Well, his contract ended December 31st. Okay. And then the U.S. would say, we are, we're going to renew you in time, you know, for the next camp, which is in about a week. Okay. But her, her goal was not like to release this information so he does not get a new contract because her thought would be, well, if they know that he abused his wife, yeah. you know, you know, in 91, when he was an 18 year old drunk at a bar, there's no way he could be the coach. So he won't be the coach. And now my son can play all the soccer he wants for the U S men's national team, because they'll get another coach. in. that's, well, that's the thought process. Okay. So while they're, I mean, related, they're like, so unrelated, like, first of all, domestic abuse got to be dealt with even 30 years on from now has to be dealt with. Like, that's not but it was dealt with okay. it was dealt with 30 that. years ago like okay. yeah it wasn't it wasn't a secret like like he kicked his wife okay. her parents knew his parents i mean it's not like like you don't go to jail for kick i mean i'm not minimizing but like yeah, yeah, you yeah. kick but somebody in a bar you're not going that's to jail. all that's come out if both parents know i feel like i mean i'm not trying to dig deeper but it's possible that more happened and they were just like uh, all that happened was this, let's move on. Because they were both collegiate athletes. Well, of course, all they're going to say was this little tiny thing happened. So I'm not trying well, to like... Yeah. Well, yeah, but I mean, I'm saying like even, like even, I mean, even if more, I mean, the the, the statement from all parties is okay. that she was okay. kicked. So if someone okay. person's like, okay, I just kicked her and she's like, no, he stomped her or like gave her like a, like a thunder kick. Yeah. Like the the point is like, it, 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 was, it was feet, it was, it was feet stuff feet and leg stuff okay and it was like it was like it was dealt with as much as something could have been dealt. like like you're an 18 year old ago. like you don't yeah. 30 years ago you're an 18 year old going to unc you're not gonna lose you know you're, you're not gonna get kicked out of the school for that okay you're not gonna go to jail for that uh unless your wife wants to press charges against you like there's 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 i mean i hate to say it, but there's essentially there's no real consequences for an 18 year old who kicks his girlfriend. There, there's no real consequences for that unless the girl's like, I want to press charges. Well, yeah. turns out you don't want to press charges against your husband of 25 years yeah. and the father of your four children. So, yeah. I mean, there's nothing else, you know, and it's like, I mean, to be fair, it's like, okay, like, are you not allowed to have a job? Because right, like, right, right, I'm right, asking right, right. you, like, should, should, like, no. should he have not been able to be a, a, like a, a professional soccer player because of that? Should he not have been able to be a major league coach because of that? No, or I don't think so. Coach? I just think that so domestic like, violence is is a bigger issue than people give it uh, give it credit for. But also, like to your point, it was dealt with. They both moved on. They both forget, forget whatever. Like that's none of our business at this point. But domestic, like, just to put it out there, like domestic violence is a problem that has to be stopped obviously there's it much is. worse things than what happened but it's still bad that it happened but again that's not really related what? to the issue at hand right the issue at hand is this woman is trying to blackmail extort whatever because her son didn't play 
Like this is the issue her son with didn't play. I mean, I'm gonna. This is. I can't. I gotta hold my tongue a lot on this because I have a. No, don't hold your tongue. A, just go. <laughs> no, no. You know the. You've heard about these like kids or whatever that like the the trophy syndrome. It's like oh, everyone gets a trophy, even if you came in last place. Like, what is? I, well, I don't know. It's hard because. Gio Reyna had, has had a great season for, Dor- for Dortmund. He played well, right? He's had a good season yeah, for them. Yeah, he played well. So yeah. did he not play really because he just had a bad attitude? And if that's not the case, if that is the case, that's what happens. Bro, Ask he Ten almost Hag, got Arteta. sent home from the World Cup. He almost, like, it was his situation at the World Cup was so bad that not only did the coach and the coaching staff want to send him back home, wow. but the majority of the t- players on the team were like, yeah, we just don't want you here. So the mom like, is out of line. Yeah. The mom is out of line. That's the end of the story. Yeah. Well, dude, it's, to me, it's like privilege. It's like, it is privilege. I don't That's care what... how how bad my kid is or how injury prone he is right. or how much he's like created a toxic situation. Like you are my friend like to the coach you're yeah. my friend like we go back we're friends this is my son let him play yeah everything else doesn't matter let my son play and if you don't let him play i'm going to make your life a disaster yeah. or or as much of a disaster as possible and i'm like like if i'm the coach i'm like okay like this sucks right it sucks that you abuse somebody and it sucks that your wife has to go through all well it doesn't i mean it only sucks that your wife has to go through this and like relive maybe she didn't again. want the kids yeah. to know to relive yeah. this for you i mean i feel like like if it was me i would be like okay yeah like i did a really stupid thing when i was a kid like it, it's not incumbent on me to like do a public service announcement right. everywhere I go. You're right. like, You're hey right. just so you guys know yeah. when i was 18 i got drunk and kicked the crap out of my wife's uh ankle you know, at a bar, like that's not, you know, my wife probably doesn't even want people to know that that happened. Cause she's like, she's probably embarrassed that she took me back. If we're yeah. being honest, it's embarrassing. Yeah, absolutely. So it's like, that's not on me. So like, why, like if, if, if you're, if you want like, and then also it's like, dude, in what world does someone's mom or parent have the ability to talk the to the world. coaching the staff American to influence? Where it's all about, it's all about uh privilege. Yeah, so this is why I mean, we're never gonna the MLS wacky. or like World Cup. This is why Amer- we talked about this last week. This is why a uh, one more reason why American soccer will not ever make it to the levels of European soccer because there is none of the, like if just look at just look at Arteta for example, one of the best strikers in the world, the captain of the team, he wronged the club one too many times and he was gone. He didn't care. He would still pay his wages, but he just didn't want him there anymore. He was gone. That's the type of thing that's like not that this is, I mean, a little bit different, but it's the same principle. If someone isn't living up to the standards or code of ethics or whatever that you want them to live, they got to go. It doesn't mean that your mom can be like, oh, it's OK that you're a bad attitude or you're cursing out the coach or that you're stealing from the country like or, you know, you're you're at the hotel, you're stealing, you're doing whatever. Like none of that matters. What matters is that the club that is that your your son had a terrible attitude. The coach didn't want him to play, and the coach made the decision not to play. You can't extort yeah. this man for that. It's crazy. Yeah. Well, bro, I mean, even look like look at like a Ballon d'Or winner and Kareem Benzema was expelled right. from the French team. I mean, I'm not saying. I mean, I, I mean, what, whatever. He, I mean, he actually did blackmail Valbuena. He did. But still, I mean, I mean, you know, I, I, I personally. If I'm being honest with myself, I'm like, yo, who cares? Like Valbuena is not, in my opinion, like he's a human. But is he good? En- is he good enough to keep? Like, is Kareem Benzema blackmailing him worth Kareem Benzema not being a part of the French team to give us the best chance of winning the World Cup? Well, it turns out they won the World Cup without him, so yeah. it it ended up being an okay decision to make. But I'm like, people. What I'm saying is like, in my opinion, better players have been left out of squads for, way, for a lot less. Yeah. For a lot less, yeah. Like, yeah, and that's. You know, I think that his mom. No out one's of line. mom and, and, called. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is why we have the term "soccer mom" in the states, right? Like, they really go in hard that's for the their epitome kid. of a soccer mom. Yeah, and that can't. Like, that's yeah. not okay anymore. You've got to respect coaches' decisions. Is, and and let that be. Like one, if your son is not good enough, that's not anything to like that's you gotta let that go if your son made dumb the decisions and the coach don't want to play you gotta you can't do anything about that you can't control it. you can't call up the coach and say nah he gotta play 
I think we, yeah, this is like a problem that we hear. This is not the first time, you know, hearing about this happening in, in sport. Yeah. Well, I mean, and then I guess the last point I want to make, this feels like high school. It just feels like a high school thing. Bro. Like a political thing. It really is. I pay X amount of money for boosters. My kids should be playing more. Like, no, this is the the world cup. Exactly. It's the World Cup, man. Like, no, you don't get any favors. It doesn't matter if you were the coach's wife's roommate and have dirt right. on him from back when you guys were teenagers and now you're all 50. But <laughs> the, the the part that was like the worst. So, like, I mean, if I'm being honest, I feel really bad for the coach's wife, Mrs. Burhalter. I feel so bad that she has now been re humiliated. Yeah, I'm sure exactly. it was humiliating in 91 when it happened. Now she's re humiliated in 2023, 30 years after. She's embarrassed again and yeah. she has to relive it. And now her kids know and her new neighbors know and yeah. all the new people that she's met along the way know. And the whole world knows. It's like this was something I meant to keep internal between friends and family. Yeah. You know, because like, I mean, I'll be honest, like, we all have done stuff that. Like, I'll, I'll just be honest, like there's stuff that I've done in my life as a teenager and a young adult that if like in close friends will know some of these things where like they could go to my employer and be like, yo, check it out. Like he did this. They'd be like, yo, like that's crazy. Like we're all looking at you different. Like we're not going to fire you because like you were a kid, but like that's yeah. still nuts that you did that. Like now we are curious. certainly looking at you. Yeah. Di- well, just like crazy stuff, man. Like maybe I'll tell you some stuff off camera, but just like crazy stuff, right? Where, but then it's like the kid, Gio Reyna. It's like, bro, you're like 22 years old. And now the whole world knows like whether, like, I don't think he had anything to do with it. I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt, but it's like, it still sucks. Cause like your yeah. mom was like willing it. to like create the biggest controversy because she felt you should have played so much. So now it's like everyone's looking at you. It's like, like, do we want this kid coming around? Like, his mom's a nut bag. Yeah. Like, his mom will, like, go do go to the ends of the earth to make... Like, it's like... Like, we all thought Christian Pulisic's dad was bad when he was on Twitter. She was like, hold my either. beer. Oh, you don't... Know, like, Chelsea... Like, Thomas Tuchel wasn't playing... Uh, no. Uh, Christian Pulis again, the dad was always talking bad about the coach on Twitter. He would like tweet something nuts and then delete. Be like, yo, Thomas Tuchel, I'm going to be waiting for you in the hotel lobby, dog. And then he would like delete it. And people were like, man, like you're embarrassing your son. Stop. He's a grown man. So here's the thing. Now this one. Uh, I, I think I told you uh, this already, like, and I can say this because not that many people watch this, but Grace and I are going to, ha- we want to ha- sorry, planning on having a kid. So I'm a hot headed. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. I'm hot headed. And I've been hot-headed for a long time in my life. Like, you know, you come up to me wrong or my sister wrong or you say something about my family, like, it goes down. And so I'm getting old and we're now about to start having a kid. Like, there are some times in your life where you've just got to be able to say, hey, you know what? I'm grown now. Let's reel this back in. Let's really try to not only not freak out, but let's maybe take this as an opportunity to teach my child that you know, you, there are consequences to whatever you do, whether you don't play well enough or you, whatever did he, I don't know if he did something stupid. What did he do to not play? It was an attitude problem. Um, he, so I think if I remember correctly, it was, so he was injured and then they had a scrimmage against a team in Qatar Okay. and he was kind of like not giving it his all. Like okay. he was just like, kind of like, I'm too good to be like playing this team. Oh, okay. And the teammates so, were like, bro, like you're not, you're not taking this seriously. Like go away. And so, then like it yeah. turned into a fight. So yeah, like, this well, is, this, is this sounds like I'm not a parent, but I'm excited to be one because I want to like raise a good child. Um, and this just seems like the, a good opportunity for Ms. Reyna to, parent her child a little bit who's still basically a child you know 21 22 year old kid who just needs to understand like hey your attitude will determine the outcome of these situations if you have a poor attitude you're not gonna be able to play and and you see this not only in life but you're seeing it more and more in world football right now because coaches don't want to deal with these egos so yeah it just seems like that's something you'd want to take at the time to not only learn yourself you haven't yet learned that lesson for yourself internally and also help your kid to figure that out because there's a lot of life left to live at the age of 22. He's actually, I just checked, he's 20 
And oh I think, gosh. I honestly think he would have taken it. I think he would have been like, you know what? Like I messed up. This okay. is a learning experience. I still have an opportunity to play in three or four more world cups. Yeah. And I won't, I won't make this mistake again. I got this. And mom's like, no, honey, you don't got this. Let me show you how you take care of this. You pick up the phone and you run the biggest smear campaign in the world. And now it's like, not now you're not, you might not at never play for the U S again. Right. Like, yeah. You, like if they're like, like the legal implications of your parents extorting, like your dad, he like, he's like the, uh, commissioner or no, he's like the, um, uh, the president of like one of the major league soccer teams, I think it's Austin FC. Like he's definitely going to lose his job. Like, like, like it's, this, this is like operation backfire. It's like, Oh, you <laughs> thought he was going to lose his job. No, your husband loses his job and your son probably won't play. Like if, if, if he, if the coach continues or the next coach continues, they're like, we don't really want to have anything to do with yeah. it. Like we just don't even want your son around us because yeah you bring so much toxicity and drama like we like it's not worth it like yeah. not to mention the other players on the team are probably like no nah, dude like we don't want yeah. like your mom knows my mom like who knows what she's gonna say to, like my yeah. dad like had an affair right. my mom had an affair are you gonna put my mom's affair on blast yeah. if i start over you you know I mean, that's like well it's the issue crazy. with um icardi in the national team for argentina that's why he never plays like he stole man's wife and all of the man's wife, all of the crew was like, he stole. I don't trust this guy to be really, yeah. you know, around my wife. And yeah, yo, you for real, Maxie that. was like, dog, don't trust him, dude. He did it. He, <laughs> yo, he was living in the guest house, man. I saw him with Wanda. He, he got, he got my son's name tattooed on his chest. It's messed up. It's messed up out here. Yeah. But I'm just saying these are lessons right. that need that people need to learn. Like this is obviously his mom needs to, to learn this too. Like it, I don't really know how she can just be like, all right, you know what, son, you messed up. Here's why. Can you learn from this? Yeah, awesome. That's the biggest thing here. Let's move forward. Let's cheer on this national team, whatever. Like you don't get to play because you messed up. If you do, let's like take this as a blessing and be really grateful for it and not let this happen again. I just, I don't know, man. It's, 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 it's upsetting. It's upsetting because you want people to be raised well and you want to know that there's like good people in this world. But, but I mean, we talked about that again. We talked about this last week. Like these are all of the hindrances that the U.S. has to overcome before they're really going to be like a real force to be reckoned with because they're not – these countries out here that are in Europe winning everything are not going to let someone's mom dictate things. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, that's – yeah. Again, I mean, if France if France is strong enough to say Kareem Benzema is not going to be a part of our plans moving forward, or or even uh, Hakim Ziyech, the best uh, Moroccan player, wasn't in their national team yeah. for an extended period. Like there's like there's so many good players who have been let go for so much less, yeah. and there was never a scandal. There was never like in like a concerted effort to like get back at the coach. It's just like yeah, man, yeah, like. I messed up. Like I was a dick to the coach and now I don't get to play. I need yeah. to apologize right. or I, you know, I did whatever I need to atone. Like I'm not going to like go to the press and be like, yo, Didier Deschamps has like pays for escorts. Like, and then like tell him like French soccer, like, yo, like if, if he doesn't let me play, like I'm going to, I'm blackmailing him now. It's yeah. like, no, like I'm going to sit down and I'm going to, and I'm going to heal and I'm going to do what I need to do to get back into the team. And eventually you got back into the team for both of those players. Yeah. Ziyech and Kareem. Adrian Rabio too. Them. They both got back in the team. Adrian Rabio. I mean, yeah, he also yeah. got back in the team. Like he apologized. His mom didn't apologize, but he apologized. Yeah. You know, mom is still hot. Mom is still hot. Up. Yeah. So, so like to your point uh, that you've made before on this show, I was like, um, well, this isn't your point, but like one, Diorena, no one is that good. So to the point you were making, like there's no one that's that good that you're going to be like, oh, be able to like run the show as a 20 year old and still be able to play. But you've made this point before, like in America, there are there's talent yet to be found. You think that this 20 year old can't be easily replaced? Come on. 
can yeah. absolutely be oh, yeah. replaced without doubt without yeah. yeah without without doubt it's like yeah i mean and even how many careers how many careers flare out? like how many if i had a dollar for every guy that i saw at 20 that i thought was going to go on to be a ballon d'or shortlist finalist that ended up playing like in the championship by the time yeah. they had turned 24 i would be rich like it happens <laughs> all the time it yeah. happens all the time, and I'm not. And I'm not. And I'm not saying that's what I think is going to happen to Giorgio. I think I actually do think he's really good and might be the best person, best attacking player for America at the time being. That doesn't mean that some kid playing for Schalke 04 isn't going to declare his allegiance to America between now and the next World Cup right. and blow him completely out of consideration. That doesn't mean that there isn't some kid that's 14 right now that's going to yeah. be 20 or I guess if he's 14 right now, he'd be 18. That's going to be, you know, leaps and bounds better. You know, who, yeah. who knows? You know, we, I mean, you know, it, it, nothing's guaranteed. So to like to make to make that kind of play after the World Cup, like you're you're better off hold. If that's the play you want to make, you're better off holding that one to your chest. So 2020 the roster selection. Yeah, 2027. Yeah. Like you played the oh, cards way too early too. <laughs> it's like not, I'm, not only am I mad at you for ru- like for ruining this woman, but you played your cards way too early. Yeah, like you yeah, play, that's true. Like you but don't even th- know how to play your cards. Right. I do think that nothing will happen to him. I don't. There's I don't nothing, think that like, they're yeah, gonna I mean, like. He's gonna make the next squad, whatever. Like if he keeps playing well, he's not. That's gonna happen to him. I don't think. I, I hope. Think I hope. I hope so. I would hate if his parents ruin his career. Yeah, that would be. Unreal. I think it's fine. I don't think. I mean, I think that. If he continues to play as well as he plays and be as good of a player as he is and just continues to rise, I don't think that the U.S. National Team Association or whatever you call it is going to let his mom ruin his potential career. I just don't see that happening in America. Yeah, I mean, or any. Yeah, I, well, it shouldn't maybe. happen anywhere. But yeah, I mean, you you would hope so, but it's like if. Like, if you know you're not, like, if the other players on the team, like, bro, you're not welcome here because of what your parents said. We don't want you here. But like, then that's, like, a situation, too, around. that the coach needs to be like, hey, like, this is not his fault. Unless, I, I don't know the whole situation, but it doesn't sound like it was his fault. So that coach needs to be like, yo, it's, like, it, this it, was it, his mom. Like, this could happen to anyone. We need to look true. past that and focus on who he is as a person and and move past this. Like, we'll all deal with the mom. You deal with each other. It's not his fault. You need to be a team. What, what what about this? What if the coach, what if US soccer renews the coach? So now you got the coach. Yeah. Who was blackmailed by your or extorted by your parents? Is he is he gonna then go and say you're playing on the team? I think that is that if I think that's what I'm saying. Like I think that if he's as good of a talent as he's I hear that he is, and then I think that he will because he still wants to prove that he's a good coach. First of all, I don't think that he's – I don't know much about the national team, but from what I hear, it doesn't sound like he's a great coach. <laughs> but but I don't know. I mean, I, I I would think there's someone better out there, especially we know that America has gone to non-Americans to coach that team before. Go and get Thomas Tuchel. Um, well, yeah. I mean, they, there's – yeah. I mean, it, when you're done with Americans, there's always a better coach. Yeah. There's there's all – here. well, here that, – that's been the discussion. It, it also is like there are better coaches – are those coaches willing to coach the U.S. men's national team? I would say no. Like any no, coach, but the men, the that, men's that, national team will pay you. They will. You will get a they check won't from pay you. They, but really? no, but they won't pay you. They won't. They, your sal. You like? I think his salary was a million bucks a year. Okay. One million dollars. One. It's than one million U.S. dollars. Okay. Is it really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Well. Okay, well, what was it? Okay, well, then, then maybe there's a shot. Maybe there is a shot because I heard one million dollars and I was like, I don't know anybody yeah. that would take the job. I guess you're it, right. But like, there's a difference. There there's a difference. Well, bro, I mean, look at it this way. I mean, you coach Argentina. Yeah. Okay, you coach Argentina. Let's say you get 500K. You're coaching Argentina. You can take that. You can leverage that to get something. You coach U.S. and you like it's like, like what am I gonna do? Like what's on my resume? I coach the U.S. men's team. Like yeah. great. Like I this guy used to coach Swansea. Do you guys want to swap? Do you want to swap <laughs> jobs? Like you know, it's like we're not gonna like I, Louis Van Hall isn't gonna come coach no. us. 
you I know, wonder how much no, he got like, paid because I'm going to look that up because Argentina, Luis Scaloni got paid 700, gets paid 700,000 euros, 700. So, okay. less than a million far. I mean, a couple hundred thousand less than a million. Louis Van Hall got 2.5 million pounds a year for the World Cup year to coach the Netherlands. Just for that year or for the whole like contract? That's crazy. I guess, well, yeah, it probably was the year. That's a lot of money, man. That's a lot of money. Yeah, it's per year. So, yeah, but I mean, it's weird that I just guessed what Louis Van Hall was. He was actually the highest paid manager at the World Cup. Wow. But yeah. For the for the World Cup year, his salary was two point five million pounds. Okay. So, but that's to coach the Netherlands. Like, so you mean to tell me something? Like, I mean, I don't know. Like, let's just Google one more, and then we should probably wrap this up because no one cares yeah. about this. Uh, let's see. Let's see how much Luis Enrique made. Oh, also, I just read something that he he had a renewed deal, so it, he got a base salary of one and a half million. Scaloni. Who did? Oh, Scaloni. when he renewed. Yeah. Yeah, bro. I mean, Luis Enrique got uh, 1.5. Okay. To coach Spain. So it's like, it, 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 I mean, even if that's the going, I mean, I just don't know who would do it. I just, you I know, mean, the maybe, national okay, team coaches don't get paid a lot. That's like, that you know, that we know compared to. Well, then that's even. The peps I mean, of the that's world. That's even more of a reason why. That's even more of a reason not to coach us. Like yeah, yeah. Like I guess we would right. have to pay. We would have to pay. We'd have to at least give eight million to get someone not non-American. That's good. I I would think because it's like if if like Scaloni, wh where did he coach before he did Argentina? Well, he was uh, an assistant in Spain. To who? Uh, Valencia or Sevilla. Okay, I'm putting Valencia. you on the spot. It doesn't matter. He was an assistant in La Liga. That's significantly better than being the U.S. men's national coach, <laughs> as long as it's a top half of the table team. Which, if it's you know Sevilla or Valencia or whatever, that, that I like, you would rather do that job than come coach the U.S. men's national. Also, yeah, it's Sevilla. like what you you got like two you got two camps. Like this year, there's nothing. You get two camps and maybe a summer tournament. Next year, you get two camps and it's like. You're barely even like you have like long periods of time where you don't do anything. So it's like, is Jose Mourinho going to come? What is Pep Guardiola going to come coach us? No, yeah. they're not going to do that. They're not. I mean, anyway, it's all. So that's all I just, got, man. I'm done. Yeah. Okay. But you, you, you say no, your no, no, piece, no. but I, no, I was just going to say that Scaloni, uh, I mean, this is not something that really has to be said. Scaloni, Argentina had no money because they were paying Jorge Sampaoli because he was not good. So they fired him. So they had to keep paying his contract. He was with Jorge Sampaoli at uh, Valencia. Where were they? Um, Sevilla. Uh, yeah, Sevilla. So he came to over to Argentina squad with him when, you know, when he left in 2018. They fired him because they did a terrible run. This dude, had, they had just had to promote him from, from within because they had no money. Argentina, the AFA okay. has got a lot of issues, um, but that's a different podcast. Well, they got it done. They got it done for. They got it done 700? though. Yeah, they're on the we're on the rise everywhere now. Three stars. Yo, they got it. Yeah, they got it done, man. They got it done. Look at that. Three stars. One, two, three. <laughs> yeah, what is that jersey? Albi Celeste. It's Juve. Yeah, but from when? It's like Juve's third kit from I want to say like 2019. I think. Okay. Cool. 2019. I don't know. It was, it was, you know, I, let's see. 2019. Juve third. Juve kit. Uh, yeah, it was 2019. Yeah, okay. yeah. I actually I liked it. It was like blue camo. Yeah, it's cool. I'm a sucker for the blue camo. It's it's kind of like it's kind of it's kind of Argentina esque, but you know, it's it Ronaldo. So we, we ain't gonna bring that up though. We ain't gonna talk about him. It's CR. It's CR. Oh, we something. should have though. <laughs> nah, there's nothing. Nah, to everybody's say. talking about him. All right. But, there's nothing to say. He's let, let let the man let the man fade out into obscurity and cash his billion dollar check. You know, let him yeah, let yeah, him yeah. let him true, 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 true. let let him let him you know relax in the in the in the desert and just you know watch, watch this though. This is you know it's about to be crazy though. His goal tally is about to quadruple. 
like he's about to get like he's about to get like a hat trick every game for the next three seasons. Dude, it, uh, it, 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 that's going to go towards his like professional stats. Right. It's like, oh, yeah, like we're looking at like senior goals, you know, in FIFA sanctioned leagues. I mean, you know, here we go. It's like it's like Europe, Major League Soccer. I uh, so, whatever you know it's like he's playing in like the lowest league of all time <laughs> I didn't even think of that and and actually now it it you're right I do want to say real quick I th- I did hear that Newcastle have like some sort of clause there's a clause in his contract that if Newcastle make Champions League then they then he'll come back to Premier League because they're gonna pay him really? an absurd amount of money because they have more money than PSG's owners and Man City's owners like combined so they can afford it and obviously, as we've seen with what Ronaldo's done with just the Instagram and Twitter account for his new club, Newcastle could greatly benefit from that new exposure. <laughs> well, who knows? Let's we'll go, see. Go Newcastle, then. Let's go Newcastle. They're definitely Newcastle making Champions League, Champions it looks League like. <laughs> Yo, bro, yeah, because, well, what, they're they're still in, are they in second still or are they in third now? It third. doesn't matter. They're making Champions League. They'll make Champions League. I thought Actually, they wouldn't. I think they would you don't you don't think Newcastle is going to finish top four? I didn't, but because I thought Arsenal would beat them, but it looks like they're going to make top four. It's going to be Arsenal, yeah, City, dude. probably Newcastle, and I guess United. I don't know. I, yeah, I see Newcastle falling. Sorry, Newcastle, but I see them just tanking toward the end of the season. Dang, he ain't got no faith. In yeah, Newcastle. I mean, look, no, if an we'll Arsenal see. team last season failed at the end of the season, then Newcastle's definitely going to fail. Okay, clip that. Clip <laughs> that. So wait, who? so who do you have finishing top four? Arsenal, Man City, Liverpool, Spurs? Man U, Spurs? I, I Man think U, Man Liverpool? U above Spurs currently. And then... Honestly, because Liverpool is only a few, what, six points behind? Six points behind who? Fourth place. Uh, I think so, Liverpool. yeah, they're on 28 points, and, and fourth place is 35. But there's also so seven um, points. a difference. Yeah, yeah Liverpool is going to make that fourth spot, I think. I think it's going to be Arsenal, City, Man U, Liverpool. Dang. Okay. I don't think Newcastle can do it. I mean, it would be crazy. It would be really crazy, but I just don't think that. I think that they will, something will happen. I, I just think that it's too much pressure. Because uh, you look at Arsenal had a better squad the last couple of years than what Newcastle currently has, and they weren't able to do it. Yeah, that's true. That's true. They did have a better squad, and they weren't able to do it. By one point but, last year. You know. But still, but, you know, we'll see. Yeah, because they yeah. they were fifth last year, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and they beat Chelsea twice. Want, and they beat United. And they still didn't make it. So. I want Newcastle to finish top four, man. I want new blood. I, I don't. Yeah, I don't yeah, think yeah. Liverpool is going to finish top four. I. Okay. I just Who do you don't think? think? I can't see Liverpool. I think it's going to be Man U, Castle, City. Okay. Arsenal. Like what it is right now, as I think is how it's yeah. going to finish. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like, you know, like I like Brighton, Brentford, Fulham. Yeah, they'll fall off. Yeah, Liverpool. But I thought I mean, Newcastle I, would too. I mean, I well, they might. I mean, they could. They could. It's a possibility. You know, two draws in the last two matches. Liverpool's a win and a draw, or a win and a loss. Spurs is a win and a loss. So I mean, yeah, you that's right. three Newcastle points not making it. versus two. I mean, Liverpool might not. They make might it. not. Yeah. All right. Know. We'll see. We'll see. All right. Thanks, guys. All right. Thank you.